Hey there, Steve here. Hope you're doing well. It's lovely to see you again. Hopefully I've got an awesome video for you today. Uh, today we're going to look at how we can be creative uh, using odd time signatures. And this is something that I like to do when I was playing with my band, either pre current band with uh, Mountains or previous bands, you know, messing around with like purposely having some structure to something and then you know messing with it with some off offset tangents of our time signatures which can have a really good effect if uh, done appropriately and tastefully of course. So to look at how to do this in a tasteful manner uh, we're going to use the outro to the song 40 Winks by the band Tangled Hair and this is from the Apples EP which was released back in 2011 I do believe and if you haven't listened to this EP already I implore you to go and listen to it because it's a fantastic EP and it's some of my favorite songs on there and I've always had a fascination with the outro of this song because it's got this um, like groove to it and it suddenly has these odd time tangents thrown in there so I thought this is a really good example of how this can be done tastefully so I went about uh, trying to work out what time signatures were being used and I mentioned it to my best friend Will whilst I was working on this and I said I was having trouble you know working out the uh, transitions like what what the the count is you know if it's going quicker or slower and all these kind of things which you're going to encounter when you're trying to work out time signatures and he said to me one of the best ways to work out different time signatures is to actually, you know, like tap the thing out that you're trying to do. So this way you can start to see where the, um, you know, the bars are starting and where they're ending. So he kindly did this for me and he's a wizard because, you know, he come back with the guitar part like an hour later and we had a bit of back and forth about it. But it turns out quite solid. So this is our interpretation of what the timing is here. And one tip I want to give about working out different time signatures is to think that rhythm and the timing are two different things. Timing is the, the meter, right? It's the steady pulse that's going on, you know, behind the rhythm, right? But what rhythm can infer in a time signature is like, if it suddenly, you know, increases in tempo, then uh, maybe perhaps the meter is changing as well from, you know, like let's say it was in quarter notes, suddenly it's going to eighth or sixteenth notes, which you'll see what happens in this example. And the opposite as well, you know, if you're going to slow down, then perhaps the meter is also, uh, you know, following suit and slowing down. So enough waffling from me. Uh, let's actually take a listen to this. So what you'll see now is a video of the time signatures along with the music so you can see where each bar is changing and what subdivisions and what time signatures, sorry, that we worked out and what the, how the meter is changing. So we'll take a listen to that and then I'll uh, break it down a bit afterwards so we can see uh, how this is being creatively used. So hey there, back again. What did you think to that? If you're already familiar with the song, then you know it establishes these grooves, you know, in the first two repeats, right? This do 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 This nice, like, little swung groove going on. And then suddenly when we get to the third repeat, we get these uh, suddenly, like, tangents that sound like they're not rehearsed, but obviously they are rehearsed. And these are the things I want about. I love doing these little things when you're in rehearsal. I did a lot in previous bands where you know you would purposefully mess with something or throw something in in between a bar and that's practically uh, pretty much what's going on in these final two repeats here. So the whole thing is four repeats. I've got that on screen for you. Uh, the first two repeats establish that groove and then the third and fourth is where things start to change a bit. So we're just going to concentrate on these two last two repeats because that's uh, well, the fun stuff's happening. And there is um, some method to the madness that I've worked out by, you know, having a look at this. And um, 
I've got this colour coded on screen here for you to try and help you. So we've got the first repeat and the second repeat as I've indicated. And in the colours here is where that things are similar in both of the repeats. So I'll uh, do a little breakdown of it because it's, it's very interesting what's going on. Uh, so both of them start with a bar of 5-4 and this is basically a extending sorry, on that bar of 3-4 by adding an extra 2 uh, quarter notes at the end. So if we jump over to the tab, um, this is going to be this bar here. Now if we take a look at the guitar, you'll see here, if we listen, just like that swung rhythm. Sorry, I should say one and two and so that's suddenly become straight and that's added the two extra beats onto that. You could look at that as a separate bar, you know, of like a two, uh, two, four instead of, you know, a bar of three, four and a bar of two, four, but we've just decided to put them together there in a bar of five, four. So that's sandwiching in between going back to the established groove of three, four. So we come back to this established, established groove, sorry, of three, four. And then here, where things get a bit interesting, um, we have this bar of 716, so this is one of the cool uh, tangents that's thrown in there. So this one, obviously, you count it as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1. <laughs> I mean, that sounds awesome, right? So again, like the 5-4 bar, there was this uh, extra bit added on, sandwiched in between. That's uh, very tastefully done there. And um, when you look at it in the bar of the, the repeat, we got the similar thing again, you know, the 5-4 bar. Uh, but this time, instead of playing, you know, one and two and, so we've got one and two, one and two. So it just stops uh, as a quarter note there. So it's a little variation there. So we're using the same idea, but uh, mixing it up a bit. And then instead of a bar of 716, we've got a bar of 916. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. Uh, what's cool this time is the first time 716 is very, um, it's quite loud and it's, uh, you know, the dynamics are quite a bit louder in the 716 one if you listen to the track. And in the 916 one, uh, the dynamics are much softer, as you hear with the drums, and also the guitar is playing legato slides to, you know, um, to mirror this. Uh, so yeah, that's again recycling the same idea. And then uh, moving on, so sandwiched in between these two, three, four bars, we're back to the groove again. And then we suddenly have this bar of 5-8, uh, which is just drums, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then back into the groove again. So what's really, I think, creative here, I really like this, is the, in the last cycle of it, you're expecting this, you know, this 5-8 drum thing again on its own, but instead it's just literally a, you know, a stab on the cymbal, psh, and then back into the groove again. So you get this bar of just 1-8 on its own, which sounds it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, so... That's again another way just messing around with it, you know, you start to, you know, you get this groove and then you throw in all these tangents and you're like, all right, maybe, you know, I've got it this time, so I'll listen and then suddenly you get a variation of that tangent, so that's very uh, creative and very tasteful in my opinion. And, and uh, the last thing um, is this bar of a uh, 6-8 and also uh, I've got it four eight here, but you could also count it as six eight at the end of the song. Um, but you got this, the the phrase is complete, but you got this extra bit added on the end. With the with the drums, it sounds fantastic. Back into the groove, and um, it does the same thing at the end, but instead of having that drum fill, it just you know cuts off instead. Uh, so yeah, they throw that bit onto the end again. So we've got if we look at it whole thing. The 5-4 bar at the start, let's say it's 3-4 with a bar of 2-4, so we've got the groove, a tangent sandwiched in between, a little one, back to the groove again, a 3-4, and then we've got the 7-16 and 9-16, little break in between, so another tangent, back to the original groove, the 3-4, and then we've got du, 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 uh, the 5-8 bar, back to the original groove, and then we've got another tangent sandwiched in between, so it's like these little tangents that's sandwiched in between the main groove. So that's what I'm trying to say is that that's, that's a tasteful way you can use these uh, odd time signatures is quite complex just for a little, you know, outro of the song. And I think that's what's always like 
drawn me to like want to work out what what's going on here and my, my friend was astonishing to you know tap it out that quickly and uh, he says it's not as neat as it could be but um if you want this tab i will upload it to my website so you can you can go over there and you can download it and if you're a patreon then i'll uh, i'll put it up on my patreon page the guitar profile i, I should say so uh, and a PDF for you, so you can download that and learn it that way. And uh, yeah, I think that pretty much covers it all. So in summary, being creative with time signatures, in this case, Tangled Hair, I've done a really good job of it, uh, in my opinion. And uh, it's just something of establishing a groove and then playing with that groove. And then the cool thing here is ultimately they have some tangents but then they recycle those tangents and change them ever so slightly which is uh, you know not too much work to do uh, if you know you're playing with your band and you're trying to work something out uh, trying to you know make something happen with our time signatures then you know that's another way you can do of it as well so you don't have to feel the burden of coming up with something new you can just take an idea you already have and recycle that I know that may sound a bit obvious but uh, sometimes you know we overlook these things right um, so, that'd be everything for this video. Uh, if you're still here, then fantastic, I love that. Uh, you know, it's great to chat to this camera, but, you know, I'm pretending I'm talking to you, so, I'm, like, whoever you is, but, yeah, uh, it's always good fun. Uh, so if you have any questions, then obviously leave them in the comments below, and I'll try and clear some things up. And, um, you know, next. So I encourage you to, you know, try out some you know, different time signatures, you know, you can come up with some really cool stuff. Uh, if, you're, if you're not subscribed already, then I appreciate it. If you do enjoy my content and you, you're finding yourself coming back but you've not subscribed, then uh, th that would at least help me a little bit, you know, obviously improve my presence on YouTube and stuff. So uh, that would be fantastic if you could do that for me. And if you are interested in... Um, supporting me in any way uh you know to, to making these content and you know putting the time in you know i put a lot of work in i do work full time so this is like my second job now and, and i'd rather do this as a job than my actual job so hopefully one day i can do that uh yeah so i have a patreon page which is there's a link for that in the description and um you know you get some stuff back in return for that and i have um you know merchandise t-shirts and stuff like that uh i do have a new store up which has slightly uh, better quality t-shirts now as well but i've had to increase the price um slightly uh, to accommodate that because i'm getting less you know for every t-shirt i sell basically and always, um, I really appreciate you watching these videos, and I'm sorry for waffling on for, <laughs> for so long, but yeah, it's good fun. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye.